Hey everyone! There are plenty of plugins that can help you kickstart your journey with Unreal. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to create a beautiful landscape and how even a single plugin can be a game changer preventing you from getting lost in the Unreal maze and significantly spinning up your workflow too. I've gathered a few images to set the vibe for the scene. I dropped them into Puref, a handy tool for creating mood boards. I want to create a small black cabin scene, reflecting the references I've collected. I created the cabin model using Mappa Studio's visual plans as an inspiration. If you want to follow along and don't have a model, you can find it in the description below. No textures or furniture though, as I can't distribute those. Luckily, there are sites like Polygon or Design Connected where you can find free furnishings. I export the model in FBX format. Next, I create a new project in Unreal, checking the ray tracing option. Then I create a new level and save it. I drag the model into the new folder without importing any materials. So we created a project and we're facing a blank canvas. This is where Dash comes in. This video is sponsored by Dash. Dash, an Unreal plugin by Polygon Flow, empowers you to effortlessly craft stunning scenes. It comes equipped with a range of features, including easy terrain creation, object scattering, physics simulation, post process prefabs, and more. Constant updates bring you new content, making you work faster and more effortless. I wouldn't recommend this product if I didn't think it's a great tool making things easier for architects, visual designers and 3D enthusiasts, especially those new to Unreal. You can try it now for 14 days for free. Let's quickly install the plugin. After, you find the dash icon here at the top. Clicking on this brings up the dash prompt bar. Clicking on the bar I start typing the word terrain, then I select the create terrain option. In the pop-up window, I can adjust its properties, like scale, turbulence and so on. After that, by clicking on the bridge icon, I bring up the list of my downloaded Megascans assets, which includes models, decals, materials, basically everything I've downloaded from the Megascans library to my computer. From here, I drag and drop the material onto the terrain I created earlier. I can adjust styling, color, normal strength, and so on. Let's create a small lake. I simply type that I want to create a plane and it appears in the scene. After that, I add the water material shader. I bring in the mannequin into the scene for scale purposes. Then I drag and drop the cabin into the scene. Type camera into the dash bar and select the new camera option. Dash creates a camera in the scene and I set the aspect ratio to panoramic. It's crucial to set the camera view early so we can avoid working on things that are not visible in the view. As the next step, let's add materials to the cabin. I downloaded a few from Bridge. I tweaked this plywood material a bit for the cabin.
For glass materials, we can grab the free advanced glass material pack from the marketplace. You can use it for the windows, or you can create your own glass shader, as explained in more detail in my previous video. Add the post process volume to the scene. Set it to unbound and adjust the exposure. I start assigning materials to the meshes, easily finding them in the dash content library. Next, let's place larger objects into the scene. I drag in this rock model for my content library. Using hotkeys I can scale and rotate the model. Then I populate the scene with instances. I want a more realistic sky in the scene. I usually use one of two methods. The first is adding an HDR backdrop. I can download free HDRs from Polyhaven. Let's enable the HDR backdrop in the plugins. After a quick project restart, I drop it into the scene. I drag my downloaded image into the cube map section. I can adjust the intensity and the rotation as well. If I want more control over the sky and lighting, I use the Ultra Dynamic Sky plugin. It's available for purchase on the marketplace. I set up the lighting conditions, adjust the cloudiness of the sky and control the fog intensity. In the post process volume, I set the translucency type to ray traced instead of raster to make the glass look better. So, I want mountains in the background as seen in the reference images. I will show you two options that I use frequently. The first option is to generate them in Blender. There, you can quickly create mountains looking ok. First, head to Unsplash or any free image site. Find images about mountains you like and download them, preferably in high resolution. We use this image as a reference in Blender. Enable the landscape plugin and add the landscape mesh to the scene. Using the settings, I sculpt the landscape into the shape roughly resembling the mountain in the reference image. Create a material and connect the mountain image into the base color and specular. In edit mode, I select the entire mesh, press U to unwrap, and I adjust the texture to fit well. In sculpt mode, I fine tune the mountain peaks. I import the mountain into Unreal. And there we have mountains in the background. The other option is to download pre-made mountain models. I believe it's worth investing in quality ones, whether from the Unreal Marketplace or Gumroad. In this scene I'll be using the mountains from Game Warming Studio. I set the fog in the scene a bit lower and adjust the bottom altitude parameter in Ultra Dynamic Sky to have the clouds skim the mountain peaks. Afterwards, I make some tweaks to the scene to achieve a better composition.
Now let's enhance the look of the cabin. I add the point light to brighten up the interior and introduce two spotlights. To make the cabin stand out more in the scene, I illuminate it with the spotlight to make the details pop. The ground doesn't look quite nice yet, so I want to fill it with pebbles. The scattering tool from Dash will come in handy for this. In the content library, I select the models I want to scatter, hold down Ctrl and drag them onto the object I want to scatter them on. Raise the density to 0.9 to make the scattering dense. I set the surface align to 1. After this, I adjust the scale. Using Dash, I add decals to the mesh, and they snap neatly to the surfaces with minimal adjustment needed. I want to bring the scene to life with some plants and once again the scattering tool comes in handy. First I'd like to add some moss to the nearby rocks. I select the plant, hold down control and scatter it onto the rocks. I increase the density, adjust the scale and use the useful masking feature Then, with the noise mask, I randomize the overgrown surface. I also change the color of the Megascan material. I do the same for the rocks in the background, but here I don't pay as much attention to detail since they are far back. If you're working on the slower computer, it's a good idea to hide various details in the scene when you're not working on them. This way, your workflow is less likely to be disrupted if these elements significantly impact your FPS rate. I scattered some grass in the scene, but I want it to appear only on specific points, not covering the entire terrain. I select the few assets around which I want the grass to appear. After selecting them, I select the grass also and then click on the proximity icon in the dash prompt bar. The grass will now only be scattered near the selected objects. Here I play around with the proximity distance parameter, fall off and edge break up to achieve the results I like. I scatter some larger plants and bushes. Now I want to add some fog cards to the scene. I type fog into the dash prompt bar and choose the fog card option. 
This creates a plain actor with the fog material on it. I open the material so I can easily customize it. Here you can see my lumen settings, which I adjusted in the post-process volume. It's time for a bit of color grading. I type color cycle into the dash prom bar and select the color grading option. By pressing the Ctrl plus G combination, I cycle through the presets. Finally, I adjust the camera settings. I click on the camera tool icon and fight you in the camera, playing with the values until I achieve the desired result. It's time to render. Here are the settings I used. I've also added some console variables. and I set the output resolution to 4K. I made some refinements in DaVinci Resolve as well, such as reducing the flickering and adjusting the lighting. And here is the final result. So this is how I created this scene. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching and thank you Dash for sponsoring this video. Take care, bye bye.